I'm excited to introduce the next speaker, okay? His story is probably like nobody's ever heard. He and I have become buddies over the last couple years, right? I went to Tulsa and trained his whole team for a whole day, right? Had a ton of fun. He's also been in our studio, sat right here, and has gotten over 20,000 views on our interview, probably 30,000 by now, maybe 40,000 by now. It just freaking keeps flying off, okay? If you haven't seen it, check it out, okay? Homeless to $100,000 a month. What? And he sat right here and we interviewed together, okay? And it's blown up on YouTube. Okay, so please help me welcome my good buddy who's doing an amazing job and continues to help the industry. The dude cares a ton. And I'm excited to see the knowledge, right? This was the one, the, the, everybody keeps saying, dude, bring Marlon on from the, they're, they're like, dude, where can I hear more Marlon? His story's amazing, I keep hearing it. So we just dropped another YouTube video of him lately, okay? Please help me welcome to the stage. Bring him up. Dude's unbelievable speaker, okay? One of the best unknown speakers in the insurance industry. Dude, you're gonna do amazing. I believe in you and thank you for being a part of this. Also, thank you for being a part of this as well. Okay, please help me welcome. Let's welcome in chat. You've seen him, you've heard of him. Please welcome to the virtual stage, my good buddy, Mr. Marlon Pock. night I was watching a Netflix movie with my wife Heather and my youngest son Josiah and we were watching a show called Animals on the Loose You versus the Wild and it was this interactive movie with Bear Grylls and it's about these wild animals that escape from a wildlife sanctuary in Africa and you get to interact or make choices that tell Bear Grylls which way to go or which animal to pursue right and even which bugs to eat and I think at one point he was eating a leech and he was he was doing something crazy but you get to kind of help Bear Grylls and you get to tell him and make decisions that'll help him consequently bring the animals back to their protective habitat. But if you chose wrong, that means you had to start over. And the cool thing about this was I was watching this with my youngest son, Josiah, and I got to watch him learn and grow and, 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 and make different decisions. The look on his face when he finished the movie and he'd helped get all the animals back, it was priceless. Like, I'll never forget that. And I love that. Here's why I love that. Because I believe this with everything in me. I believe that every person, every person listening right now, I believe that every person deserves a second chance. See, most of my life, I didn't believe that I deserved a second chance. Um, I don't know if, has anyone ever felt that except for me? Like, I didn't feel like I was worthy of another chance in life. As a young kid, one of my first memories in life when I was growing up was in second or third grade. And I was in school like most boys, and we were very mischievous, my friends and I. We were always looking for trouble. And one day we found it. We were walking around on the playground, and we, we were away from the playground equipment, and we were walking, and there it was on the ground. There was a cigarette that was smoked and I guess it was still smoldering so I guess someone flicked it over the fence and, and drove by but well, one of the kids picked it up and stared at it and being the attention seeker that I am I went and grabbed it and started acting like I was smoking it and telling jokes and I didn't see the teacher walk up behind me and she grabbed me I my heart dropped and to her, it looked like I was smoking a cigarette. So I don't blame her for what she did. But for the record, I, I never smoked anything. A few minutes later, I was sitting in the principal's office and listening to my teacher call my dad to come and get me. I was suspended. I missed the next few days of school. But I sat there in fear waiting for my dad to come pick me up because I knew this was not good. See, my dad wasn't like most dads. He, he was different. See, my dad was an abusive alcoholic. And um, he, he wasn't like most dads. And so on the ride home, he didn't say one word. Uh, he got home and he told me, go up, to my, go up to his room. And I went up to his room and I sat there waiting. And I'll never forget him walking in and taking off his, his, his military belt. I don't know if you've ever seen a military belt before. They got these huge buckles. 
And I remember seeing that thing flying through the air at me. Boom! And he kept swinging and swinging and swinging, and he wouldn't stop. And it started getting harder and harder. And earlier that year, I started taking Taekwondo. And um, I don't know when it happened or when I clicked, but something inside of me said, that's enough. I went to protective mode and I saw that belt buckle coming at me one last time and I, I dodged it and I spun around and I kicked my dad in the chest. My mom says that she ran into the room because she stopped hearing me cry. And she said he was punching me as hard as he could with his fists. <clears throat> That was the first time, that was the first time I felt less than, I felt like trash, I felt unlovable. Why, why, why would he do that? Why would he beat me like that? Why would anybody do that to someone that they loved? From that point on, I, I just didn't feel like I deserved greatness. Can you imagine being six, seven years old Something inside of me died that day. I, uh, I remember thinking, I, I'm never going to be successful. I'm never going to be great. I'm never going to win in life. If, you're, if my dad would treat me that way, then, um, the only thing that I could do was dream. I, I always start, I started to dream a lot. And I thought one day one of my dreams would come true. I didn't share my dreams with my, with my friends. I didn't, I didn't share my dreams with my mom. I didn't share my dreams with my wife when I got married. I, I never told people what I wanted to do because I, I didn't think I deserved it. Has anybody ever felt like that before? Is it just me? Over the next 30 years, I had failure after failure after failure. Bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. I, I didn't think I had a second chance. I thought when that happened to me, that was my life. That's what I was supposed to be. Even relationships. Uh, I, I never had very successful relationships. And when, when I met my wife, my beautiful bride, even when I married her, I, I thought, man, he, she can't even really love me. She doesn't really know me enough to love me. Deep down, I was still that little boy laying there, clinging to life, clinging to consciousness, feeling unloved and unsupported. Unsu un I didn't feel good. I, I ruined everything in my life, guys, for 30 years. No good relationships, no good jobs. At a certain point, my, uh, my wife had to make a decision that probably one of the toughest decisions any woman has to make that... I wasn't fit to be a father. I wasn't fit to be a husband. And we decided that I had to leave. So in 2014, guys, I, I, I left my home and I was homeless. I didn't have anywhere to go. And I would stay on friends' couches until I ran up my welcome or I would, you know, try to stay at the YMCA. But I was so embarrassed. I was eating out of trash cans. Um, it was the lowest point in my life. And... I believe in second chances because I'll never forget sitting on my buddy Brian Henson's couch. I stayed at a bunch of friends, different houses, and my buddy Brian was gracious enough to let me sit with, sleep at his house. And I was on the porch one night because him and his wife were inside fighting because I was eating a lot of food. I wasn't paying bills. I was laying around. And they were fighting about if I could stay there anymore. And I was on the front porch. thinking of a reason to live and my phone rings and I pick it up and it was Nate Alford and I hadn't talked to Nate in a year or two and he starts talking about this insurance company and I'd sold insurance for 15 years and never made more than $30,000. $30,000 was a good year. Like when I made $30,000, we were taking friends to Sizzling. Like I was tipping people an extra dollar. Like $30,000 was a lot of money to a homeless guy, right? But I, I never made more than that. And 
Nate Alford's called me about insurance and for some reason I started listening. But not only did I start listening, something was awoken in me. I, I started dreaming right then, right there on that porch. What if this is my second shot? What if I get to turn my life around? Of all the crap that I messed up, all the things that I've done, what if I can go from here and I can do better? I always thought that if I really got a second chance, I wouldn't need a third. Have you ever wanted a second chance in life? Have you ever wanted a redo? What if 8% Nation is your Nate Arthur call? What if this is your second chance? I got started at Symmetry Financial Group and and I, one of my first conference calls, one of the owners, Casey Watkins, is, is on a conference call. He's talking about being different. And the thing that I love about second chances is, number one, if you get a second chance at life, you got to do it different. And so he's talking about George Costanza off of Seinfeld. And, and George Costanza is one of my favorite characters, but George has this really crazy life. And so one day he decides to do everything different. And it was unbelievable. His results were crazy because he lived his life different than he lived it in the past. And I thought, that's it. What if I do something, everything that I do, what if it's opposite of everything that I've ever done? What if I think opposite of every thought I've ever thought? What if I do opposite of everything I've ever done? See, my life wasn't working. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't matter what I did. I was homeless. I had nothing. So when I started there, you know what I started? I decided that, you know what, if you're going to do it again, number one is you got to do it different. I wonder about people watching in right now. What if you had an opportunity to do it different? What, what if you had the, the chance to, to start over or, to, or, to, or to, 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 to flip the book and start a new chapter in your life? That, that's what I got. That was my wake-up call. The second thing that I understood was if you get a second shot at life, you have to understand that there is no, there can never be a plan B. When, when, when I got that call, when I started with that insurance company, that was it. That was, I knew this would be the last job I would ever have. I was never going to have to, there was no plan B. There was no, well, I've got my resume and send it out. This is it. This is it. We were watching that Bear Grylls show, the animals gone wild or, not animals gone wild, animals on the loose. Um, and, and there was this challenge where Bear Grylls was towards the end. He has this difficult task. And the decision you have to make for Bear is he has to go across this gorge. And it's about a thousand feet in the air. And the, the only thing separating the, the both sides was this rope. And the option was either you can scoot across on this rope and maybe you have the opportunity to fall to your death, or you can climb down the ravine, walk all the way across the valley, and then climb back up. Well, me and Josiah said, let's take it. Let's go. We're, we're adventurous. Let's go get it. And so we chose for Bear Girls to scoot across the rope. And guys, I wasn't doing it. I was just watching. I was terrified. Like, my hands were sweaty, and I was nervous, and I was watching him. But it was pretty, it was pretty cool because what he did was he – he laid down kind of military style and he put the feet around the rope and he starts scooting and he's getting tired and he would rest. And then he would start scooting some more and he'd get tired. He'd hold on and he'd rest. It seemed like hours, but he made it. He was scooting and he rests, he's scooting and he rests and he made it. And he said something so profound when he got to the other side, I wrote it down, I wanna share it with you. He said, You'd be surprised how much strength you have when you have no plan B. Number two, you'd be surprised how much strength you have if there is no plan B. Number two is if you get a second chance at life, there can be no plan B. There can't be any other options. You've got to burn the bridges. You've got to burn the ships. You've got to go all in. And see, most of my life, guys, I've never gone all in on anything. Not in my marriage, not on myself, not with my kids, not at a job. I've never gone all in. This was my shot. This was it. Number two is, if you get a second chance, you got to go all in. You got to. 
Number three, if you get a second chance at life, you can't quit. Quitting is not an option. Quitting is not, you, you don't, you can't, if you get a second chance at life, this is what I'm doing. Like Will Smith said, if you want to beat me, I will die before I get off this treadmill. I, I knew that when I started this job, this was the last job I was going to have. There was no plan B. Do you have a plan B? Maybe plan A isn't working because plan A knows that there's a plan B. What if, what if you did that like with your marriage? Like you get married and you're telling your wife, you know, I love you. But if things don't work out, babe, I've, I've got another fr uh, girlfriend in my past and, and things don't work out between us. You know, what if you say that in your marriage vows? How long would your marriage last, right? There, there can be no plan B. Number three is this, don't quit. When I went to my first conference at uh, Symmetry Financial Group, I was a few weeks out of being homeless. I still wasn't living at home. I was literally sleeping in my car in my driveway because I made the decision that I'm going to be the man that I, all, I committed to my wife. I'm going to be the man that I committed to my kids. And I wasn't going anywhere else. I was going to win them back. I messed up everything else in my life. So one day... Uh, I had to go to this conference. I didn't have money to go, I was homeless. So when my wife went to work and my kids went to school, I went home and I broke in. I, I stole some money from my wife. I knew where the stash was and I even got my kids piggy banks. They were saving up to go to Disney World. And uh, I knew that I was gonna change their lives. So I, I stole that money and I went to that conference. And when I was at that conference, I'll never forget um, I was listening to Brian Pope. He's another one of the founders of Symmetry Financial Group. Now, this is the wealthiest guy in the room. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. And he's talking, and I'm sitting there writing, and I'm looking around, and he says this. He says, you can make it here if you just don't quit. And I wrote down, just don't quit. And I looked around. Nobody else was writing. This is the wealthiest guy in the room. He said, you can make it here if you just don't quit. I started writing it over and over and over. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Tears were falling out of my eyes onto the paper. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. I remember thinking I can make it if I just don't quit. I can make it. I wonder how many jobs that I, I, I still be at. I'm, I'm glad I'm not there, but I wonder if I didn't quit, if I didn't give up, if I believed in myself, if I let other people believe in me. So guys, if you get a second chance at life, number one, you got to do it different. You gotta do it different than you're doing it. Can't do the same thing, you gotta wake up different. You gotta get dressed different. I took different ways to work. You gotta do it different. Number two is there is no plan B. I, I, I got nothing, this is it. All my eggs are in one basket. This is it. There is no plan B. This is the plan and we gotta make it work. Number three is you can make it if you just don't quit. You can make it if you just don't quit. Every now and then I'll, I'll lay down at night and then I save my marriage. And uh, golly. I get to tell my kids I love them every night. Sometimes when I'm laying in bed before I go to sleep that I, I envision myself walking up to that second grader. And telling a man, I see myself looking at that decimated kid, that, that kid that 
had no hope. I see myself telling them, man, everything's going to be okay. Just keep your head up. You're going to be great one day. I envisioned myself telling that kid, millions of people will be moved by you. You're going to change the world. Because of your story, you're going to change the world. I look at that kid. Tell him how proud I am of him for not quitting, for not giving up. What if you can go win so you can tell your old self, thank you? What if you get a second chance? One of my favorite superheroes is Batman. And, uh, He's got this quote. It's my favorite quote. It says, everything is impossible until somebody does it. Everything is impossible until somebody does it. Everything is impossible until somebody does it. I get to go back and tell that kid, man, if you just don't quit, We're going to do the impossible. And we're going to change the world. Let me ask you this. I'll leave you guys with this. You got one life to live. If you get a second chance, what are you going to do with it? You got one life. What are you going to do with it? Don't quit. Thank you guys so much, uh, Cody. Thank you so much for letting me be on here. I'm honored and blessed to be a part of this. You guys have a great day. 8% Nation, baby, let's go. Talk to you guys later. See you at the top. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it. See you in there. Something about you that when I was listening to your story, and we're gonna go through it a little bit today. I was like, I gotta know, I gotta hang out with that dude. I get to know that dude. Mm -hmm. And you, and you've been, you've been the exact same way. You know, you've been, you text me every morning. You're